What's going on, my friends? Hope you're having a good day, and I hope you're having a good week as always. I want to talk about two stories today. The first story I want to talk about is a two-part story. There's two big Supreme Court decisions today. The first one has to do with an old civil rights bill where they kind of changed the definition of sex to include a sexual orientation and gender. We're going to talk about that, why it's important, and why some people probably feel it's not important. I'll give both angles of that and tell you what I think. Second part is uh, the Supreme Court also shut down Trump administration's challenge to California for sanctuary state laws. So before President Trump was president with Obama, Chuck Schumer, all of these Democrats, everybody enforced the law of the country. It's their job. They're politicians, aka lawmakers. So if they make a law, the whole premise of the law mattering is the fact that the lawmakers abide by the laws they themselves create and pass. Um, but apparently that doesn't exist in this country anymore. And uh, they found a way to emotionally confuse people into thinking that it's not happening. And I'm going to talk about not only the lawlessness, you know, they talk about it in the police force and you have protests, but the lawlessness in the Supreme Court, the lawlessness in politics. And now you see that lawlessness out on the streets of Seattle and major cities. And this is the big push, guys. They're going to use LGBT. They're going to use black and Hispanic and women and any sort of you know vulnerable group that they could find to get an emotional appeal out of people. But what they're really pushing for is lawlessness uh, and other things among eventually probably more laws than ever. It's lawlessness for some, for others it's communism. You know, for you, you can't even play basketball without their permission or go to the gym. But for them, they don't even have to follow the, their own laws that they themselves create. It's a nutty world, folks, but we're going to stay calm and talk about it. And the third thing I want to talk about today is uh, 54 scientists have lost their jobs as a result of an NIH pro, uh, pro of foreign ties. And if you want to read that story after this video, it's on my Facebook page. You just have to look down and you could read the whole story. Some crazy stuff that's going to go under the radar and... Uh, it's a tricky world. I mean, it, people only care about one thing for two months and they decide what people really care about. They figured out how to manipulate people into being emotional over one event, which is okay. I understand certain events really matter, but they can just cheat. They can lie. They could get fired. Their premise that they just did for three months could be totally wrong. And they figured out a way to just never get held accountable and never have people notice this stuff. So that's what we're going to talk about here. God bless you guys. I'm going to pin something to the top. Uh, and then we're going to start. Here's my free email list. We'll do some shout outs. I'll drink my little coffee thing. Then we'll get it cracking. Let me see. Bang. Pin it to the top. Is it pinned? Did it work? Bang. Stay in touch with me dot com. The least annoying email list you'll ever sign up to because I don't even email people because I don't like emails. But I have your emails and I'm saving them. And one day I'm going to strike with an email. You're going to see an email and I'm going to be like, I told you I was coming. I'm just easing up on it because nobody likes weekly emails. Let's be honest. What's up, Jason? How you doing? Jessica, how are you? God bless you. I'm going to read that comment. That's a good one, Jessica. She said, exactly. It's so arbitrary. Jessica said, gym bad, protest necessary, church bad, graffiti understandable. You nailed it, Jessica. I mean... You can't go to church with five people or 10 people, but you can go in the streets with 20,000 people for black trans rights, but then you can't, you can't play basketball with five people, but you can gather in 10,000 people and you could burn things down and that's normal, but you can't, you know, congregate with five of your friends. It's, it's, it's a loony world. And, um, it's actually freeing when you realize that you know, the politicians are not going to save us. The Supreme Court is clearly not going to save us. Um, it, you could think of it as a bad thing, but it's also very freeing. Promise what's up from Grapevine, Texas. I heard it through the Grapevine. But it's freeing once you realize they're not really coming to save us. We have to save ourselves, uh, your own community, your own family, and then also just shift the culture. They just They dominate culture. They dominate mass media. And because they do so, nothing else really matters. That's why people say anomaly run for office. There's only so much you could do. I could run for office. I could be the president. I couldn't literally be it, but you get what I'm saying? And Trump can't even do what he wants to do because the Supreme Court won't even listen to him. They won't even follow the own law that they themselves created at a certain point. 
So, you know, the bigger picture here that people don't realize is you got to change the culture, shift the mind uh, to a, a more honest light. They've been deceived. We've been tricked. We've been duped. We've been subverted. You know, clear that up. And uh, that's the way to win. And we're going to do it. James said you have paid trolls trashing in every thread. I don't even notice because I don't really pay attention that much, but um, we have one of the biggest pages on Facebook. I mean, you know, everything I, I do, I'm not bragging, but it gets like two, five, 10, 20, 50, 100,000 shares. So I have fake pages every day. If you ever get a message like saying there's a gift or something for me, I'm sorry, guys, it's not me. I wish I could give you all a gift. I will maybe one day, but um, I have fake pages every day. Pretend to be me because you know, they get a lot of uh, clicks probably because we get a lot of clicks. So it's a good thing. It's just don't fall for it. And as far as the trolls, I mean, I'm sure some people just don't like what I'm saying. And I'm sure some people troll. I don't, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't notice. I, I notice all the good stuff. What's up, Andrea? She said, what happened with the Supreme Court? We didn't get into it yet. You're just in time. We're doing some shout outs. Someone said Cuomo's teaming up with Bill Gates for the school system. Guys, it's going to get crazy. I'm not Listen, I'm not a parent myself. I'm not a life coach or anything, but I would say at this point, the school system, you know, homeschooling or private school or some, some way of, you know, if you don't have money, I don't know, but I, it's, it's tough to justify sending kids to school. I mean, if they're teaming up with Bill Gates and they've already just gone so far down the drain, we're going to talk about it like we did the other day. These people just won't stop. It's like they won't, they just won't stop going down the drain so you know it i would i don't have a kid but i would probably try to shield shield it as much as possible from these people someone said how someone said how white of you you think trump is good because you're so, so smart brad whatever uh very 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 good comment all right First story of the day is uh, the Supreme Court passed, I guess, six judges, including the conservative judges like Neil Gorish and uh, what's the other one? Justice Roberts, conservative. Yeah, really great picks there. Um, they decided to pass and change a law, you know, that was set in the civil rights era. And it said that you can't be discriminated for a job based on your sex until, I don't know, 2010, maybe 2015, the word sex meant your gender, you know, male or female, you would choose one. And that's what sex meant means. However, they pretty much just changed the law without going through Congress, without going through the House of Representatives. And we're going to talk about for people who are like, you know, oh my God, Anomaly hates what they're doing. Just hear me out. You know, let's not get too emotional because I'm not hating on people. I don't want people to be discriminated against, but you just have to understand, and we're going to talk about it. They want people to be triggered like that guy, you know, just freak out. You're white, Trump, whatever. That's how they want you to think. Like, we're going to get to the core of what's going on, why it matters, and what they're really doing. So they changed sex from meaning male to female. Now they've redefined the law without anyone's really approval. They've changed it to mean sexual orientation and gender identity. Let's start with sex sexual orientation. This has no, I, I'm not, I don't want to discriminate on gay, lesbian, bi. That's not what I want to do at all. However, the word sex, male or female, or even if, if you want to take the liberal approach and add 10,000 genders, it still doesn't mean sexual orientation. The word sex means gender, has nothing to do with, with whether you're straight, bi, or gay, or whatever you are. Totally separate things. So they're doing the normal liberal thing is, changing the dictionary. Now words don't mean anything anymore. We're going to get into that in the second story. Listen, it's hard to live in a world where nothing means anything anymore. If left means left, like, you know, left means to your left side, right means to your right side. If you just say they don't, you know, cross them, they don't mean anything. Left could mean a hundred different directions. We lose sense of reality. We become crazy and there's no purpose to anything anymore. And then we just become a sloppy, you know, messed up society. And that's what you're seeing in the streets. You see these type of people take over an area in Seattle. What are they doing? Are they building stuff? Are they creating, you know, like prosperous areas? No, they're playing dodgeball, graffiti stuff and punching each other in the face every other day. They're aimless, you know, but that's what happens when you don't believe definitions. So my big beef with this whole bill, 
I don't want to discriminate against gay, lesbian, male, female. I never would want to do that. But you have the Supreme Court changing the definition of sex to mean something that it never could possibly even mean, even if you took the most liberal, most progressive, most far left definition of what they're talking about. So they've changed male, female sex to mean sexual orientation, whether you're gay, straight, or bi, or gender identity, whether you identify as a different gender, or you identify as three genders, or you're a gender bender, and you're, you know, you're bending your gender, whatever. You know, so it's, the, the issue with this is what I just said. Do I really care about it? Not really. You know, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't want people to be discriminated against, but this is just another power grab from people in politics or in the court system to destroy definitions of words so nothing really matters anymore. On that very note, they did the exact opposite with uh, you know, another situation, which is Trump was trying to challenge with the Supreme Court to uh, challenge California's sanctuary state law. In that situation, the word illegal immigrant and immigrant, regardless of how you feel about it, regardless of how you feel about people who you want to work in this country, the word immigrant and the word illegal alien or illegal immigrant is two separate things. One person has a citizenship or a visa, one person does not. It's the same with anything in this world. They won't allow Trump to challenge that. So now they're saying we're trying to limit the impact of the president's immigration agenda. So once again, words don't matter anymore. Before Trump got elected, Chuck Schumer used to say, I won't say illegal immigrant. I'll only say illegal alien, not because it's a mean word to put people down. It's a literal law definition. If you're a lawyer or if you work in the court system, you have a certain vocabulary. Words mean something, you know? Words have meaning. If they don't, it's an aimless society. So they've changed the definition of what illegal alien meant because they didn't want to be offensive to illegal immigrant now to undocumented worker, now to just immigrants. So they're conflating any immigrant with an illegal immigrant and telling Trump that he's not even allowed to enforce the law. Why is this a problem? Do I hate illegal immigrants? Absolutely not. Do I uh, you know, want good people to stay in this country? I do. However, words don't mean anything anymore. These people are just subverting the entire country and just basically saying, our job is a lawmaker. It's the same with a cop. Why do people have such a beef with cops not following the law. Cops are the lawmakers. If the police don't follow the law, what's the point of having them? You get what I'm saying? If the police are above the law and they don't even follow the own law, their own laws that they create, that's the whole reason people are mad now, you know, or at least perceivably mad. It's the same with this. If you're a judge, you're supposed to enforce the law. If you're a politician, you're supposed to make the law. If the people enforcing the law and making the laws in the court system, they created these terms, they passed these laws, it's called illegal because it's not legal because they have a system. If they had no system, there would be no country. If you have no borders, there is no country. If you, have, if you don't have states, there is no state. You know, it's all based on words and definitions and borders. That's how we've operated for the last two, 300 years and every country on the planet operates. So they're saying Trump is not allowed to challenge California for not enforcing the law that we ourselves created and we're gonna change the definition of a word to include sexual orientation that has nothing to do with your gender, even if there are multiple genders, and somehow this is going to be perceived as a virtuous thing because people are emotional. So if you love your lesbian friend, you're gonna say, oh yay, my lesbian friend won today, you know? But in reality, and I'm gonna get to the next story, they don't actually even follow these laws to begin with. So in this country, since the civil rights era, you're not allowed to be discriminated on based on your gender, and you're not allowed to be discriminated on based on your race. But what are these same people doing that are gonna tell you that they just gave you a big win? They themselves are actually going past the civil rights era to discriminate based on gender, uh, or I'm sorry, based on race. Adidas is hiring 30% new hires that'll be black or Latinx. I don't know, they can't say Latino or Hispanic anymore. Now they're saying Latinx. Next year, they'll have a new word for it because they, you know, every time they make a new word to be trendy, someone gets offended by the word and then they add another letter, then there's a Q and now there's Latinx. I mean, it's just never ending with these people. They don't, they don't believe in words or anything. But they themselves are discriminating based on race. So where's the Supreme Court? The Supreme Court is allowing a word to mean five different things that it doesn't mean, 
they're blocking the president of the United States from enforcing the law that they themselves created and passed at a certain point, whether it was them or the politicians. And then they're simultaneously allowing people to hire people specifically on the color of their skin and block people out of that position strictly based off the color of their skin. So it's just literal clown world, guys. I don't know what to tell you. And the agenda, people may, may think it's to help certain people. It's a multi-pronged agenda. The first thing, if you notice the chaos and disorder and the same people telling you you can't go to church or work out or get your hair cut or allowing tens of thousands of people to go in the streets, they are looking to destabilize, demoralize, and establish chaos in this country. And they've done it in multiple areas over the world. People who get upset with me say, Anomaly, you like Trump, blah, blah, blah. I've been studying this stuff since before I even liked Trump or vote. I didn't even vote for him in 2016. It's called regime change. It's called you know central bankers. It's called two-party two systems and pol political puppets who regardless who wins, they you know go for the same agenda. And the way that they take over countries that they don't have control in, whether it be Syria, whether it be Libya, whether it be you know Ukraine at a certain point, they try to regime change, which is get their leader. They try to do it in Venezuela as well. Why do you think Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer agree with Donald Trump? What do Donald Trump and Nancy Pelosi agree on? They don't agree on anything. They hate each other, except when it comes to regime change in Venezuela, all of a sudden they're best friends. Little suspicious, this is what America does in other countries. How do they destabilize and how do they regime change? They turn protests into riots and then they use an event whatever that event is, as a justification to achieve means. You can't just invade a country, but if you can consider, if you can convince people that there's a civil war and they're gassing their own people or something crazy is happening, the police are just murdering people left and right, even though statistically it's like nine, uh, you know, then they could say, well, let's bring in the United Nations. Let's defund the police and disarm the police. Let's bring these people in. They've done it all over the world. So I'm not even, you know, confused by what's happening like other people. I've seen this story for, for three years now, and I actually have tweets from 2017 predicting this event. How are they gonna do it? This, 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 and they're doing it. Why, how do I know this? Because they always do it. It's the same story on loop. They turn protests into riots. They use riots as a justification to intervene. They use one event, lie about it, stage it, or just basically frame it in a way that does the opposite of what it's doing to then justify extreme measures to take over the country or to, you know, uh, take advantage of a chaotic situation. They did it in Libya, they did it in Syria, and now they're doing it in the United States. So what, what you see in Seattle is chaos. They don't know what they're doing. They're allowing people to burn stuff down. They're allowing people to, you know, take over police stations of female black police chiefs. They don't care about her. They care about women in black, you know, America until it's a black female police chief who's trying to save her neighborhood. And then all of a sudden they don't care. They'll let the little white communist anarchists in. So they're destabilizing it. They're trying to bring that to the whole world. Now, a lot of people would say, you know, anarchy and communism are two totally different things, which they are. Anarchy is really far right. It's zero government. Anarchy means no law. Communism means complete law. But in order to get complete law, you need to destroy. In order to take over, sometimes you need to establish chaos and just dismantle the, the system that you have in place, and then you could replace it with a new one. So what they're doing is chaos, disorder, nothing matters, sex isn't a thing, male, female, doesn't matter, you're this, this word doesn't mean this. I would even be okay, just to be quite honest, if this were a gender thing, I'm not saying it's my thing, but if they were to say, there's 10,000 genders and we're gonna protect them all, that even somehow makes more sense than what they're doing because they're saying the word gender or sex means gay, straight, or bi. Your sexual orientation has nothing to do with your gender. It's, I mean, it does as far as like who you're attracted to, but I'm saying those words don't mean the same thing, but they're conflating them while simultaneously taking another word, illegal immigrant, and saying that the president's not allowed to enforce the law they themselves created. They're allowing people to destroy Tampa or a Walmart or a Wendy's or Atlanta or New York or wherever it is in Seattle. They don't care. They're trying to burn down the system you look at what happened with the shutdown, they won't allow people to go to work, but they're allowing 10,000 people or more in the streets to talk about black trans rights, guys. Do you think these people care about anything or your family or your 
you know, financial situation or your health, they are trying to destabilize the country. It's a planned, you know, implosion of the economy and society. And then they use these type of things to tell people every day, look, the LGBT community got to win. Look, the Latinos are winning. No, they're just using you. They're using your sexuality, using your community, using your gender to do the exact opposite of what they say they're doing. And the same people that are passing laws against discrimination that we already had on the book since the civil rights, they're just perverting what the word means while simultaneously discriminating against people based on their race. These are the same people that will not hire you because you're one race and purposely hire you regardless of your qualifications if you're another race. These people are backwards. I don't know what to tell you. We're gonna get through with truth, with love, with real talk. Uh, last thing I wanna talk about, and uh, before I get into that too, with these laws, one more trick, I forgot I wrote it down. They want you to think that what the bill says is what's actually happening. So here's a trick. I'll give you one that the, the president and both parties passed in March or April. It was called the CARES Act. It was a $6 trillion exchange of wealth. This, it, the biggest bill, the most expensive bill in human history ever, $6 trillion, guys. If you look where the money went, if you didn't get 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars, which no one did, it means the money went somewhere else. It was a massive exchange of wealth. It was a bailout of Wall Street. It was a, a, a big deal. CARES Act, does it mean they care about you because it's called the CARES Act? Not really, that's how they wanted to pr present it and say, look, we care about you. Here's some $1,200, take your money and you know celebrate. CARES Act doesn't mean they care about you. Same with like a clean water act or a clean, you know, clean the water bill. You could read the bill. The bill might say you can dump pollution into the ocean. The bill might say that you can take a dump on the street and then it's gonna, you know, go into the sewers, which then leads to the ocean and destroys mammal life. Just because it has a title doesn't mean it is what it says. So you gotta get past the emotions of it, guys. This is what they do all day. LGBT, we did this, we won. You gotta read what it is. Go past the headline, read the article, read the sources. If they don't have a source, they're probably lying. And uh, you know, it's just nonstop tricks. And they're like thousand page bills that the politicians are not even able to read. They'll give them 24 hours to read a 2000 page bill. It's such a joke, this system. And it's, it's imploding by design. Last thing I wanna talk about, then I'm gonna answer some questions and chat with you guys. Um, 54 scientists lost their job as a result of an NIH, which I believe is the National Institute of Health uh, probe into foreign ties. If you look at my post, it's my last post, you should read the article. I think 93% of them were getting some sort of Chinese funding. A lot of them were Asian men because the Chinese program, the whatever they call it, talents program or their foreign program they target nationals or people of their ethnicity usually so that's just what it is and uh this is crazy but uh i've already known if you look at what the health experts are saying and you look at who these people are they're not beacons of science and truth they're like either completely brainwashed by politics partisan politics or they're working for someone else and this is the problem with what's going on in left-wing america listen i don't care if you're black white hispanic gay straight it doesn't matter to me. I would love, and this is what the Republicans are trying to do, albeit a terrible job, or at least the Trump era, just be an American. If you're in America, love the country, You know, let's all work together. This is our community. We are the United States of America. Regardless of who you are, we have to work together. We don't have that. The left wing says, you're this, you're that, you're this. Burn the flag, you can't stand up. We don't like this. Really what they're doing is making it impossible to figure out what's going on. Russia's taking advantage of us. China's taking advantage of us. Who's not taking advantage of us? Name a country, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Iran. I mean, people are having a field day with the United States because we're just open for attacks. We're, it's so easy, you can't say anything. If you were to suggest someone was a foreign agent, they'd say, you're racist, you're sexist, you're, you're this, you're that. It's, these words are designed to stop discussion. Guys, if you talk about ethnicity at all, they call you racist. I don't have a racist bone in my body, but I'm also not a robot where I just say, everybody is, yeah, we all bleed red blood, we're all human, we're all equal, we all deserve, but at the same time, there are differences in countries and cultures, and you have to identify that. So the words racist, sexist, anti-Semitic, xenophobic, they're designed to stop the discussion, and we're being attacked. 
via those words because you can't say anything. I have my suspicions about certain people, but if I were to say it, they'd say, oh my God, you're a this or you're a that. And it's like, no, this is happening. 54 scientists, many of whom, one of them I believe was Charles Lieber was his name, who's uh, being even further investigated now, he was getting millions of dollars from communist Chinese ties and establishing Wuhan labs. And you look at Dr. Fauci, he was going behind the government uh, you know, shutdown of, of what was, um, they put a moratorium on this type of studies and he was funding through the NIAID a coronavirus bat gain and function manipulation in Wuhan, China. This is the big scoop, guys. This was in mainstream Newsweek. I did a whole video on it and they demonetized it. This is what the country should care about. We're being manipulated all over the place. We're being shut down off of fake data. We're being lied about about why it happened. We're being told that there's nothing else going on besides Colin Kaepernick's activism. Meanwhile, every foreign country on the planet, including our own politicians, our own Supreme Court judges, our own leaders, our own governors, are just working against us actively to destroy our own communities. I mean, at this point, you know, San Francisco is now joining Minneapolis to get rid of the police force. These wealthy liberals who live in gated communities and have private security, they don't benefit from the police force. Some people don't benefit from the police force as well. Some police are corrupt. Some police are, are messed up. But at the same time, if you look at a crime blotter, there's thousands of rapes, there's thousands of murders, there are thousands of robberies, and there are people who are helped. They save babies sometimes. It's not all bad. There's good and bad. But I would say you take away a police force, you're just going to get overridden by the strongest force on the ground. It's the same thing that happens in other countries. They get rid of the evil leader, you know, Saddam Hussein, Muammar Gaddafi, Bashir al-Assad. And then who takes over the, the town or the country? The strongest force on the ground. Who's the strongest force on the ground in the Middle East? A lot of times it's ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, and they take over. And they start enslaving and killing people, and that's not good. It's the same thing with San Francisco. It's not going to be a utopia. Someone strong that isn't a total moron is going to take over the city and there's going to be more crime. So you, you'll figure it out the hard way. But overall, it's, a, it's such a joke. Someone said about the ventilators too, 1000%. The whole COVID situation, I've done so many videos on it. If you want to scroll back, I've debunked every single thing that they've talked about from the beginning with facts and with science so they don't take my videos down. Everything about it is wrong. I mean, even now they're trying to say there's more cases, there's more cases, there's more ca cases. They're trying to justify another shutdown of this country to implode the economy even further. More cases is not a bad thing. There's less deaths. If you look at the death rate, the average day death rate has gone down since the peak. So if there's more cases and less deaths, that means that the death rate of the virus is lower. That's a good thing. And we've already figured this out. The World Health Organization said it was a 3.2 or a 3.4 death rate. Not even remotely true, guys. It's a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 0.5 at the most. Lancet said it was a 1.2 and then they said it's a 0.66 and then Lancet got caught lying about hydroxychloroquine studies, guys, because they never wanted it to work because it's a cheap drug and they're spending millions upon millions of dollars and their friends and their little cabals are spending money in vaccines and they want a certain situation to work. So if you're funding eight vaccine companies or seven vaccine companies like Bill Gates and then you're also funding the hydroxychloroquine studies with a uh, you know, one of the credit card companies at, at uh, Langone, you know, uh, you know, hospital in New York, which he was doing, you have bias. You don't want a cheaper drug to work. They lied. Lancet lied. And everybody found out. And it was a big scandal that no one cared about. This whole thing has been rotten from the core. The death rate is not that high. There is no justification for the shutdown that happened. There's no justification for the shutdown that's going to happen. They're just lying. So there are more cases, more cases, but less deaths. That means the death rate's lower. Oh, there's going to be a spike. Of course there's going to be a spike, guys. Look at the flu every year. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up. Has the flu ever been eradicated? It's been around since 1942. That's, I'm sorry, the, the flu vaccine has been around since 1942. That's over 70 years of the flu vaccine. The flu has not gone away. In fact, it's gotten worse in the last five or 10 years. So how are we going to get rid of COVID-19? It's not, it's not going to happen unless it's a manipulated virus that's going to disappear because it's not a natural virus. That's the only way it's going to naturally disappear or we get immunity and it just dies off because humans get stronger than it. 
You can't wait and, oh my God, we got to shut down and said, of course, it, how would it not come back? Where's it going? Oh, it's going to come back. It might come, of course it's going to come back, but that doesn't mean you shut down. They're mass counting this stuff, guys. The amount of tests, Trump's got that right. He says, we're testing a lot, so we have more cases. Of course, if they did what they did to COVID-19, to the common cold or to the flu, you'd have that many cases of that. And if they counted the same way with the common cold or the flu, which is anybody with the common cold died from the common cold, they're even saying George Floyd had COVID-19, guys. I don't know if they're counting his death as a COVID-19 death, but look up that article. George Floyd had COVID-19. Most people probably are gonna get it at some point because it's a very common virus. So if you die, you bash your head against the wall and you die and you have COVID-19, they're counting that as a COVID-19 death. You get shot, you have COVID-19, they're counting that as a COVID-19 death. The average age of COVID death is older than the average age of death in America. It's not this you know, deadly virus that's just murdering young people left and right. They had to lie about it in order to justify to scare parents into not sending their kids to school. Guys, it's the biggest lie ever. And it's, it's a real thing, it's happening, but it's not catastrophic. And if they do this much testing for other stuff, have you ever seen this effort mass media and testing wise, you give out this many flu tests, you give out this many common cold tests, you're gonna have 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 deaths because a lot of people get it. And then if you're counting the people with it that die from anything, why do you think most deaths were in nursing homes, guys? Because old people are dying at higher rates. Nursing homes, if you, any nursing home, is probably having on average, you know, 10 to 20 to 30 people dying every year that's just the unfortunate situation of what happens when your average age at your you know home institution is like 85 or 90. so then if those people die they're saying they died of covid 19. on top of that cuomo and a lot of these liberal states put active people with covid 19 in to the nursing home they put people with covid 19 into nursing homes and that's where all the people died obviously all in liberal cities and then guys and then on top of that, they were putting people on ventilators all the time. And what was happening with the ventilators? 80, 90% death rate, most people on the ventilators were dying. Did they ever stop to think maybe that wasn't the solution for it? Can you even say that without getting banned on social media? I don't know, but it's worth a scientific study. And then they, on, on top of this, guys, they weren't allowing you to see your grandma or see your grandpa if they were in the COVID chamber. And why is this so sick besides the fact that you can't see your family member? If you study and Google how many people die from hospital mistakes every year, on the lower end, it's tens of thousands. On the higher end, they speculate it's hundreds of thousands. So between tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people die every year from hospital mistakes and you're not even allowed to witness if they're making a mistake, there's probably gonna be on average, over the, la over the next 10 years, there's gonna be more people dying from hospital mistakes than COVID-19. So they won't even let you see your family. You're not even allowed to have a funeral, but you can watch George Floyd's funeral on television. You're not allowed to have a funeral with 10 people for the person that they might have just killed or that just died naturally. And then you uh, can watch black trans rights on, on, in New York City with tens of thousands of people. These people are evil, guys. And at, at a certain point, you just have to wonder who they are and who they're serving because they're not serving God and they're not serving America. They're serving the devil. These people are rotten, evil, sick, disgusting, twisted, and wicked to the core. And the more people who realize that, the more they'll stop. And the less people who don't realize that and think it's about something that it's not, they think it's about George Floyd or the LGBT community, the more they're gonna lie, the more they're gonna deceive, the more they're gonna use your community as a shield, and the more they're gonna get away with it. These people are wicked. Wicked people, guys. Call them out. God bless you guys. God bless your family. God bless America and God bless the world. I'm going to answer questions for like 20, 30 minutes and then I'm going to take off. I appreciate you guys and uh, I'll be here cranking out good content. Don Yates said this guy needs to cut back on his Adderall. I appreciate the compliment, Don. I don't take Adderall. I'm not on any drugs. I don't, um, I haven't done Adderall since I was in college. So this energy is natural. This energy comes from working out, exercising, getting sunlight, uh, you know, trying to live a somewhat healthy lifestyle. So I'll take that as a compliment. I'm not on Adderall. I'm just very focused and on point. So thank you.
let me see. Um, Stephanie said my dad, let me see. Sorry, I was trying to read. Jennifer said my, my dad, April 3rd of cancer, not even hospice, people wanted him to help. I cared for him and my six year old. Sorry to hear that, God bless you. Thank you, Jamie. Can you please talk about a solution to redlining the issue? It's got to be enough people waking up. I mean, even Trump can't get anything done. A lot of these politicians can't get stuff done. There's going to have to be a stand at a certain point, but it's, it's going to have to come from an awakening, you know, and uh, certain people doing certain things. I, I can't really um, speculate as far as, you know, how to really change the tides. If you really study this stuff, they're everywhere. They own every company, they do everything. So it's, it's a hard one to, to, to turn around, but it's going to take a lot. I don't know. And at a certain point, it might take something more drastic. I, I pray not. But at this point, I, I can't really tell you. All I can say is, you know, take care of yourself, take care of the people you love or whoever's in your circle and uh, figure out a way to, in my perspective, I'm not going to tell people how to live their lives, but I would think most major liberal cities are going to go down the drain. So as long as you're not there, you'll probably be okay. But it's going to be some it's going to be some trying times. I think the uh, the best, you know, uh, silver lining I could say is nothing lasts forever. So if things go down the drains, it's not going to last forever. You had communism in Russia. You had, you know, communism in other places. You've had bad situations. And they've always turned around and gotten good again. You know, so this is going to be the trying times. I don't know exactly what you can do besides wake people up you know, uh, try to hold people accountable and do your best. I don't know. I think it's cultural though. We have to shift the culture. We have to make enough people realize that what they're doing is not cool. And there are, there are good moments of it. Like outside of the media, outside of celebrities, outside of what they're doing, there are people waking up. It's just the most people who are waking up, they don't throw a fit. So you don't, you can't really count them. People will throw a fit because they have nowhere to go because they shut the government down or they shut society down. But there could be more people that disagree with them who are keeping quiet and working and keeping the country afloat. So, you know, I, I, I don't, um, we'll see. It's just, it's just disappointing to see so many people in government and the Supreme Court justices just totally not do anything. But I kind of never had, had that much faith in them anyway. Someone said boycott companies and celebrity influencers. Yeah, I mean, in general, like, I don't really watch movies or anything. You know, like, I deleted my Netflix account two years ago when they signed Obama. No offense, but I knew it was going to get political, you know, and it's just gone down the tubes. And now everything they're promoting is, like, violence, violence, Hannibal, like, clown movie. And then, like, you know, they're, they're these are weird people. So, yeah, don't support them. I mean, if they're just going to, like... The men's national soccer team's not going to stand for the flag. Don't watch them. Don't buy their jerseys. Don't support them. I mean, you're the national team. The Mexican national team should stand for the flag of Mexico. The Argentinian flag should stand for the uh, flag of Argentina. And America should stand for the flag of America. But these, these people, guys, they're very crafty. And they use, this is why I just, I don't like these words, racist, sexist, xenophobic, anti-Semitic. They're created to stop discussion. They're created to destroy America. You can have a nuanced conversation about ethnicity or culture uh, and who's doing what on a, on, a, on a percentage scale. You can have that conversation without being hateful. Those words are meant to destroy. So in this country, they brought in so many different types of people and then didn't allow them to be the same. What used to work with America is people used to come here, but they used to have a common culture and a common goal, and they used to have a common American dream. They've slowly destroyed that over the last 30, 40 years, and they won't allow people like Trump or someone else to be like, we're all American. We all are this. They hate, they won't, that's why they don't like him, because he could unite every ethnicity here. That's the only way to do it. If you don't come under the flag, what else are we going to come under? We have different interests. A lot of people have different goals, and it doesn't work long term. I mean, you know, it's something to be said about other countries where if you can have a common culture, it works. And if you don't, it doesn't work. So it's like all this intersectionality stuff, it's all just virtue signaling. It's like, you know, no offense, but just to be quite honest, if you took a poll 
in black America, if you polled every black person in America and asked them about, you know, if they thought that transgender rights should be in black activism, I could almost guarantee you that a majority of black Americans would not want to conflate black activism with transgender rights. Like, it's no offense, but I think they're very two different things, but what are they doing in the streets? They're conflating black activism with trans rights. And I don't think that's a popular thing in black America. Just like if you, you know, you have like Muslim feminists, if you polled most Muslims about feminism, they wouldn't like it, you know, because their religion and their culture doesn't like feminism. They don't like liberalism in countries where there's a majority of Muslims every time they put a block to liberalism, they put a block to feminism, they put a block to LGBT, and they don't uh, like what the left does in America. So this idea of like intersectionality is just a way for the people at the top to just confuse the crap out of everybody and act like everybody has a, a similar goal, but they mislead you. It's not like they bring you under a guise to send you to the promised land. They're just running you in circles, getting fundraising off you, subverting the country, destroying the city, and then they're gonna throw you aside in two years. They don't care about you. Someone said, do you believe the numbers saying Biden is ahead of Trump? Um, I do, I actually do, because uh, you know, I think Trump, it's a long, it's a long election, and uh, you know, from now until November, things are gonna change. When they actually debate, they're gonna change. But you have to understand, more people are gonna vote this year, Trump picked up a lot of votes, but also they're very crafty. With this shutdown and the shutdown that they're gonna do later in the year, what they're doing is keeping people home. If people weren't forced out of their jobs and forced out of vacationing, like you can't do anything in this country. So everyone's home, so they're in the streets. They could never orchestrate these fake protests without what they did beforehand. They had an event to keep people inside, they destroyed the economy, they pushed for mail-in ballots, and then they had, conveniently, everybody stuck at home, and then they told them to go into the streets for George Floyd. So what they're gonna do in November or September is shut down again, keep people inside, give them mail-in ballots, and they're probably gonna get a lot of votes. And a lot of people will vote for Joe Biden, and he will, I mean, even demographically, this is the smoking gun that a lot of conservatives didn't want to talk about. And the, the Charlie Kirk's and the Ben Shapiro's, they said anybody who talks about this is racist and anti-Semitic and they lied to their audience and they told you that they're just alt-right and everybody besides them is bad and it's not true. They're just too cowardly or fake to talk about reality. If you look at demographics and statistics at this rate, you know, if, if things don't change, Republicans are never gonna win again. So I think Trump has a strong chance of winning, but as far as the Senate and the House, Highly, highly likely that it goes blue. And in general, there's got to be there's got to be a big event. There's got to be a big cultural shift. I think Trump will win personally, but do I think he's down right now? I think at the moment, I do think he's down. Should he be down? Do I agree with it? No. Do I think Joe Biden's competent? No. But the average voter, unfortunately, is not very bright or um, aware of what's going on. But this can all change. I say this as a challenge to people. You know, you got five months. Someone said they'll never debate, they won't allow it yet. If they, if they could figure out a way to do what they did this year, the possibilities are uh, unlimited, but. Do you, this is a great question. Uh, see, I love a good question. This, let, me, let me read this real quick. Um, Carol said, Carol said, do you think the left wants to lose so they could hate Trump for another four years and further destabilize our country? Now that's a great question. You have to realize with, with, with Democrats, where do they get their fundraising? Guys, they're like going bankrupt in a lot of cases. Hillary Clinton helped bail out the DNC. That's why she was the favorite candidate among other reasons. They don't have money, guys. They don't have a Trump. No one likes Biden. Like they don't, they liked Bernie. Bernie got fundraising, but a lot of these establishment Democrats, no one likes them. They, they thrive off of chaos. They need a George Floyd in order to fundraise. Guys, outside of Black Lives Matter, the Texas Democrats and Act Blue got more money in like 24 hours than they've gotten ever. They broke records on multiple levels of fundraising off of the George Floyd protests. They need this. So it's very likely that they purposely will throw this election. I'm not saying for sure, but you know, Biden's not a good candidate. They might want Trump to win. Without Trump there, who do they blame? You get what I'm saying? 
Democrat city, Democrat mayor, Democrat judge, Democrat prosecutor, everything Democrat, Democrat, Atlanta's Democrat, every, everywhere that stuff's going on is Democrat. There's no Republicans in sight. And they blame Trump. They love blaming Trump, guys. Trump just got to Washington four years ago. Chuck Schumer, Joe Biden, he wrote these bills. They, they all used to do what Trump did until Trump said it. And then they act like they cry and they put a woman with like a burqa behind them and fake crocodile tears. These people are so, I, I don't understand how people don't see this. These are the fakest, sneakiest people on the planet. So it's highly possible that they purposely want to put Trump there to destroy further you know because when trump's gone they're gonna have to take responsibility even now i mean look at seattle they're still blaming trump i mean these people are so wicked the only word i could think of is wicked their own city's being overrun trump's nowhere to be found they're blaming trump don't bring in the military okay then do it yourself it's like if he doesn't do it they blame him if he does it they blame him these people are wicked i do think there is a portion of them that likes him being there so they have someone to blame it's like an abusive relationship with a boyfriend or girlfriend where they're always blaming you for everything in your life. And the second you leave them, they still blame you. You know, they'll blame you for 20 years. And then they, you know, at a certain point, you just got to leave them alone. You're like, you got to do your thing. Like, he ruined my life 10 years ago. It's like, no, get over it. You know, you got to, you got to make, keep moving. Thank you guys. I appreciate this super chats or whatever they're called. Someone said people don't see what they want to see. It is what it is, but we got five, six months, and in general in this country, like, things shift very quickly. You know, this is why they want to control the internet, too. Certain documentaries really woke people up. I know people who hated Trump three months ago who now have a MAGA hat, and they're talking about Joe Biden being a creep. They saw a documentary, so there is an effect to the internet, and if you shift enough, I think this is like a rule of culture. Most people are followers, okay? Most people just follow the crowd. They don't know anything. So if you can shift culture enough, you don't have to shift it 50%. You have to shift it 10% and then the 50% just follow. They just, you know, they'll just go wherever, whatever's cool and popular. And this is why people like myself are effective and others aren't because the GOP and even, you know, Trump has been effective because he just talks like a, a gangster, really. He just says whatever he wants to say. And whether you're, you know, PhD or you didn't go to high school, it's not hard to figure out what Trump's saying. He speaks like a real person, so everyone can understand it. They're like, oh, Trump's so dumb. No, he's really smart, but he's also, you don't need to use big words to be smart. That, that, there's a bunch of useful idiots that have PhD that say, rah, rah, rah. you know, they say big words, but they're not saying anything. It's like a rapper who says, lyrical, spherical, serial, miracle, serial. You know, it's like the rhyme scheme is good. You're rhyming three syllables together, but you're not saying anything. You might as well not even be rhyming because it's just a bunch of gibberish, so... You know, in general, there's an effective way to shift the culture. You know, Candace has been very powerful in that. That's why she's being hated on high levels. She's black, a woman, but she's also right to the point, you know, and people hear it. And whether they like it or not, they're listening. She trends every time she talks. Kanye's effective. You know, there's other people, but uh, a lot of the Republicans, their demise has been they're not good at culture. They don't understand how to shift consensus and you know trump is the best thing the republicans have ever had the gop is pathetic i mean you know a lot of their strategists no offense some of them are good some of them know what they're doing but a lot of them they're like out of touch they don't understand the youth they don't understand black america they try to pander but it just doesn't hit hard because they're trying too hard you know but so the left doesn't know what they're doing either i don't know it's, it's a strange time Someone said Trump is going to win. I think so, but I would say right now, I think he would lose if the election was now. But you got to think January to April. It's a big difference of what happened in this country. Now you're talking about June to November. Guys, it's going to be like 20 different movies until then. So there's going to be so many different events that are going to shift the shift the, the, the ways. We'll see though. Uh, Wanda said, I come from a communist country. I'm a proud American now. God save our country. God bless you. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. My generation is just so, I don't want to say spoiled, but like we don't, we lived in a good time. We didn't live through a big war. We didn't really live through communism. We didn't have to witness any of this stuff. We just had to complain about it with like a Starbucks cup from our computer. And you know, they say if you're not grateful, 
you lose what you're not grateful for. I think that's a rule of life. So, uh, you know, I think we we lack gratefulness in this country a big time, and we're gonna reap the uh, you know the negative effects of that. Michael said, "I used to like this guy, but now I see he's just a whiner." I don't know what you're talking about, Michael. There's been no whining, just a phenomenal uh, presentation and then a question and answer session. Wah, I'm whining. Ah, you're right, Michael. Ah, ah, I'm so. Who's whining? We're, we're just talking. There's been zero, zero whine, zero complaints. Someone said, I can't understand how some people don't see what's happening. Yeah, I hear you. Someone said, with all the liquor stores and pot shop open, stay sharp, people. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's not a coincidence that they kept those open. Someone said, I'm sure they'll end it with climate change and blame Trump. I called that too two weeks ago. I said, just wait for them to start fires with arson and then blame climate change. It happened in California and arson started a fire and they're already blaming climate change. It's like, guys, these people are not bright. They've been in, they, they've stolen religion from people. And I used to think, I used to think religion was really holding people back. You know, you had all these religions, everybody's beefing because of them. But they took away religion and they replaced it with a new religion. This new religion for people is television, celebrities, political propaganda, and scientific propaganda. Phony politicians and partisan hacks pretending to be scientists, lying to people. That's their new religion. So it's like you could light a recycling yard on fire. That happened in Atwater Village last year. A recycling yard caught on fire. Guys, every, you know everyone's wearing masks now? I'm one of the only people in Los Angeles who had a mask last year. I had an N9 mask because the air was so bad. I used to wear it when no one was wearing it and everyone would look at me weird and I'm like, I'm not breathing in this air. A recycling yard got caught on fire and it smoked out the city from downtown Los Angeles to Beverly Hills. Guys, the entire city was filled with smoke and no one noticed, no one cared, no one paid it any mind. And I said, guys, this is not even fire from wood this is plastic all over the air was like levels like chinese levels of uh you know toxic and no one cared like these people are morons i'm sorry like my neighborhood my community it's been trashed tents it's disgusting it's gone to crap over the last night no one cares they just a white woman stands in the street like black women can't be told what to do i'm like you're not even black you're not even a black woman you're a white woman holding a sign for black women. Meanwhile, you won't even clean up your own street. These people are so brainwashed. It's like they walk around like zombies and like the whole neighborhood goes to trash. You know, there's recycling plants on fire. They're like, oh, it's climate change. What does climate change have to do with a recycling yard getting caught on fire? Like, this is how dumb these people are. You could do anything. Their new religion is phony politics. Like, you could just, li oh, it's... Uh, the fire, like you, you could like show them, like light a match and just throw it in a forest. Don't do that, obviously. It's illegal and terrible. But like you could do that, and they'd be like, "Wow, it's a shame that climate change moved your hand." Like they don't, they don't get it. It's like, well, Dr. Fauci said that, so I gotta believe it because you know he would never treat me wrong. But it's like, but he said the opposite last month, and well, that was last month, and then this. It's like these people are just too easy to move. It's like. You guys go in the streets. They're like, yes, master. You know, like, woman's march. Okay, science march. I was at the science march, guys, and I'm like looking around. I love science. I love environmentalism. Clean the air. The biggest hypocrites in liberal cities, first of all, in LA, most people don't even know. Actually, Mark Ruffalo talked about it. They have fracking all over the city. They're hiding fracking in buildings. They have empty buildings that are a shell of a building, so you can't see it. They're just fracking in the middle of your community, destroying your water. No one cares because they're not smart enough to figure it out. The, we have the most disgusting oceans because we have tens of thousands of homeless people leaving feces in the street. And when it rains, it all drains out into the ocean. We're destroying sea mammal life. Our, our beaches are trashed. The water is toxic. And, and people are talking about climate change. It's the biggest brainwashing of environmentalists. Clean the air, clean the water, clean the ocean. The dirtiest air, 
plastic Chinese, you know, levels of uh, polluted air, and I say that not to be offensive to Chinese people because China has very polluted air in most of the areas. Everything environmental in this, in this, in this city is going to trash. But they're like, it's the climate doing it. It's like, no, it's you. Your, your ignorance is the reason that our environment's going down the drain. It's moronic. They've, they've replaced every major environmental movement with climate change. So they don't know, like Dr. Drew's like yelling at them on television. He's like, guys, you're killing mammal life with your homelessness. They don't care. Three homeless people die every day in LA County. No one cares. More homeless people will die this week in LA County than the entire year worth of police killing unarmed black men. I'm just saying that's a fact. People get mad. They're, you you have the privilege of the privilege. It's like a white woman like drooling out. You get privilege. It's like I'm part Hispanic. You're you're completely white. I'm not. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying. It's like you're you're whiter than a ghost. You see me. I got the olive tan. What do you? You're privileged. You don't. You're so privileged. You don't even know what you're talking about. You're. You're marching for the world's worst people and subverting an entire culture on behalf of you because you're so self-righteous. Like, I have, to, I have a sign in my head. So, you see this olive skin? Don't tell me what to do, white woman. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, jokes aside, it's like, it's, it's delusional. You can't tell black women what to do. Lady, you're white. Why are you holding a sign for a black woman? Like, it's so ridiculous. These people are idiots. Someone said, I've been to Shanghai three times and it's so polluted, it looks like, oh, the air is terrible. You know how much the air kills in China? I've looked it up. It kills over a million people every year. Air pollution, a million people. No one cares. People are so dumb. It's crazy. Someone was talking about, asked ask me about human trafficking. It's a real thing, guys. Look it up. It, you could Google it. Even even the most dishonest organization, human trafficking exists. Millions of people. It's a billion dollar industry. It's 100% real. It happens at the border a lot. It happens in the country a lot. It happens all over the world a lot. It's so mainstream. Ashton Kutcher and Dr. Phil talk about it, but no one cares. They're like, I'm mad because television told me be mad and Kaepernick told me be Guys, you're just being, you're covering for the world's worst people. They're sitting in their mansions laughing hysterically at you. You're like, look how dumb these people are. We literally, they don't even notice what we're doing. They don't notice how criminal we are. They don't notice that we pass a law and we don't even do it. They don't realize we just extorted like millions of dollars, at, trillions of dollars out of the economy. They don't understand any of this stuff, guys. They'll march for one event. They'll just keep doing these events. They're like, look at this one. These people are idiots. They're laughing at you. They're not like, oh my God, I'm so scared of the protests. They organize the protests, guys. These are not organic. These are not for the people. There's a reason every corporation on the planet is supporting them. Left-wingers claim that they're anti-corporation, yet they have every corporation cowering to them because there's this isn't a threat to the people in charge, guys. They love it. Someone say, you should be on Joe Rogan's podcast. I agree, you know, but... Someone's got to talk to Rogan. He he knows what time it is. You know, it's on it's on him. So I said, can't believe you you only have eight thousand viewers. That's a lot of viewers. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I've been talking for an hour to have eight thousand people still tuned in. That's a lot. Live. By the time I turn this off, it's gonna have three hundred thousand views. That's a lot. You know how I mean how much. How much does Chris Cuomo get? What does he get? A million viewers? Probably not even on certain nights. Guys, I'm, I'm outperforming most news organizations with no money, no equipment, no crew, no staff, no promotion, no commercials. It's pretty good. So I said, I saw a headline today that they're marching for the, they don't know what they're marching for, guys. They're gonna change it every day. You could just make something up. It's that easy. It's okay. So I said, thoughts on the 20 million cell phones disconnected in China? Um, I, don't, I don't know what China's doing. It's hard to tell. I, I read that, that they disconnected a lot of phones. Maybe they have a new phone. Maybe people disappeared. I don't know. I don't, the, China's smooth, you know? The Chinese dynasty, they're just, they just move and you don't even know what they're doing. They're just so quiet about it. Someone said, Anomaly, your opinion on Andrew Yang. Would love to hear your opinion if you're familiar with him. 
Yeah, I'll say this, and this aged very well. I never liked Andrew Yang. I mean, I like his Twitter. I think he's like a funny guy on Twitter, but I never liked Yang. I saw him talk to Shapiro. I saw him talk on the news. I never thought anything he said made sense. He'd always say, well, this is gonna happen, so this will happen, this is, and, and the first thing he said was like, not even a real thing. And then he'd be like, so we have, I thought he was a plant the entire time. I thought he was a sneak. And then what happens? He's like, hey guys, I'm the cool guy, hey. And like all the libertarians and poker players like him. And then as soon as he's done, he's like, oh, I'm gonna go to CNN. And now he works at CNN. And now he's like, hey guys, we have to defeat Trump. He's a plant, guys. He's a total, he's a total plant. He's, he's, not, he's not the real deal. Not a fan whatsoever. Uh, and I never liked him. I mean, I liked what he was saying sometimes, but I never, I, I don't like his ideology. I don't like his... Uh, UBI and I, I, I knew he was kind of kind of a plant the whole time. Someone said China has a plan the US doesn't. It's easy for China to move. Here's the pros and cons to a free country. America's free, but we're so diverse, no one can agree on anything. So China, they don't not you can't not agree. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, you have to agree or they'll like take you off the streets. So the con of that is there's no freedom. The pro of that is they get things done quickly because they control everything. Even Japan, Japan's more free. They're out marching, and I'm not trying to be mean, but they're out marching for Black Lives Matter. They barely have any black people that live there. It's 98% Japanese. Look at the demographics of Japan. They're free, but they're all Japanese, so they all agree with most stuff. Where it's like they're they're marching for people that they don't even have in their country. It doesn't even make sense. I'm like, guys, you can take. They they reject refugees. It's like if if there's a hundred refugees coming to South Korea or Japan, they freak out and they don't allow them. They don't. Even, it's like they're such hypocrites. Like, Wait, Black Lives Matter. Then let a thousand refugees from Somalia into your. They don't want them in their country, and then they turn around and say they matter. It's like then then let them come. But the point I'm getting to is they move quicker, but even in Japan, everybody agrees with their culture. They don't trash the streets. They don't trash the subways. It's all clean because everybody there cleans it. And if you do come from out of the country, they expect you to follow their rules. Here is the only place I could think of in the world that you come here and you matter more than the people here. When my immigrant parents came from, or grandparents came from Poland and Italy and Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico wasn't really immigration, but you know what I'm saying. When they came here, they didn't come self-righteous and say, it's all about me, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican woman, it's all about me. She said, I'm going to a great country, I need to work and follow the rules. Now, you have more rights as an illegal immigrant. They bow down to you, and if you're a legal Hispanic, they treat you like trash if you're conservative and you love the country. It's the only place in the world like that. You could trash the streets, you can graffiti things. It's like, I like a good graffiti if it's done right, but it's like, you know, they're just trashing cities. Like, you can do that. This country is a mess, guys. The culture of this country is like backwards. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And China doesn't allow it. Japan doesn't allow it. Singapore doesn't allow it. Philippines doesn't allow it. I mean, no country allows it. Who, who would allow what we're doing? I mean, they've brainwashed people beyond belief. It's like embarrassing. I mean, you know, like, they're like, but we gotta do this. Like, no, you don't. Mexico doesn't just let millions of people come in. Why would they do that? San Salvador doesn't do that. Bolivia doesn't, like, no one does this. Why would they do this? If they don't have laws, you don't have a country. If you don't have borders, you don't have anything. They all do that, and the ones who don't get taken advantage of in, in South America. When there's a problem in Venezuela, you know, the, the countries that don't have big security, they get taken advantage of, or they help out, and then others don't, whatever. Someone said, I don't trust any of the candidates. Why should you? I mean, what have they done? Someone said, when my dad, someone said, but it was somewhat hostile when my dad came to the mainland from Puerto Rico. For sure. No, nah, people were, uh, you know, it was definitely hostile. Here's the, here's the thing, though. It's like, for my grandparents, too, they were not very polite all the time. However, you didn't act out. I'm not saying it was right, but like you come as an Italian immigrant or a Puerto Rican immigrant, you don't act crazy, you know? Like you work and you, you work to gain people's respect. And over the course of time in America, you know, Puerto Ricans and uh, you know, Italians gained respect. Same with the Irish, the Irish got treated horribly. But over 
through hard work, they gain the respect of Americans. Now you have people who don't deserve respect wanting respect. People who don't do the right thing, they want, you know, a, a, a trophy for it. It's like at, at a certain point, the tough love sometimes works better than like the, the wide open arms. It's like, doesn't even make sense. I mean, I have, I mean, I don't share my personal life all the time, but I have Mexican siblings from a Mexican stepfather who's 100% Mexican, who came over when he was younger, who loves America and loves Trump and has a you know thick Mexican accent. He loves the president. He came here, but once he got here, he appreciated it and he worked hard and he got his citizenship and that's the story, you know? But he doesn't act, he doesn't hate this country. He sees it going to crap and he's like, these people are idiots. You know, it's not, they act like, this is a good point that Candace made that no one wanted to hear. They want you to identify as the lowest common denominator in your race. They don't want you to do that to help you. They're trying to lower the bar of your ethnicity, whether it be black America, Hispanic America. It's not to say that you look down on somebody because of their legal status or what they're doing or the mistakes they made. But at the same time, if you're Italian and you're identifying as Italian, you wanna raise the bar of Italians. You don't wanna be a bunch of loser you know, degenerates. You wanna raise the bar of Italians so the whole country, instead of looking at Italians and calling you names, they say, you know what, Italians have earned our respect or Irish. You don't wanna be an indentured servant your whole life, so you work and then you break that stereotype and people don't think about Irish people like that anymore. But they want Hispanic and black and women and others to, to get be a low bar so they can utilize you. When you're weak and vulnerable, the Democratic Party and these liberals take advantage of you and both parties, to be honest. So they're not doing that to help you. They're telling you this is who you are. Guys, there's so many brilliant black and Hispanic and women in this country, thousands of them, doctors, lawyers, not that that even matters, to, like personalities, workers, you know, farmers, they don't let them on the television because those are the type of people that would connect. And they're like, you know what, I wanna be like that person. He doesn't have all the money in the world, but he's a good guy. You know, he, like, he's the type of guy you want in your community. They want you to be the type of person that no one wants in your community. Regardless of your race, if you're a criminal or a moron and you're defacing property and standing in front of cars with signs and throwing things at cars, no one wants you. It doesn't matter if you're a white liberal, if you're black or Hispanic. Who would want you in your community when you're acting like a degenerate? No one wants that. No smart person or, or, or functional person wants that. So they want you to be that so then they can always use you. You know, they don't wanna show you the Hispanic family. There's millions of Hispanic families in this country who are good people, who don't commit crime, who work, and where are they? You know, they always just use Hispanics to push their agenda of open borders because they wanna destabilize the country. They don't care about Mexicans or, or South Americans. At the border, there's a huge human trafficking problem. Kids die every day crossing the border, and it's not because of American Border Patrol. The Border Patrol saves kids every year as well. It's not just like they're, they're just throwing kids in cages. They're overwhelmed because they're getting hit with cartels, this, that. They, they're understaffed. They don't even know what to do. It's all just a big lie. You guys get it, though. Someone said pity party mentality is, is useful. Yeah, because they keep your mindset in the gutter and then they can manipulate you for 100 years. And then you have other cultures coming here from Nigeria, from Asia, they can't even speak English, and they're crushing because they don't have that mentality. They want to keep you that there, you know? The immigrant mentality is, at least at a certain point, I don't know about now, it's a lot stronger. People who come to America want to come to America and it's not easy to come here so when you get here you appreciate it it's like the kids who were born here from immigrants or the third generation guys my generation is is idiotic it's it's pathetic like they've they've like weakened us to the point of like I I look at some of these people and it's just like I'm not judgmental but it's like it's just pathetic uh, you know I'm like what what happened in your life that you feel that way like I even in my most liberal days like I wasn't that dumb I don't know, they're just so self-hateful and they hate this country and they hate themselves and they hate other races, honestly, they'll pretend like they don't. How much do you hate black Americans to think that they're not capable of getting an ID or doing some stuff? Like they, it's called the bigotry of low expectations. They say, I'm here, I'm white liberal, I'm here, you're here, I'm gonna help you, you need $10, you, you need an ID from me. That's bigotry of low expectations, they're racist, they hate themselves, 
they hate other people and they masquerade it with like fake love, fake kindness, fake, we'll help you, we'll save you, the white savior complex where they, they just systemically and cyclically leave you in the gutter and then act like that's where you belong and then say that they're helping you out. They're like, we'll, we'll destroy your neighborhood and, and write things on, on the businesses that you can't open. How is that helpful? You burned down a Wendy's. I don't, I don't know if it's true, but I heard it was a black owned Wendy's. So now the, the black person in Atlanta who worked really hard to own a Wendy's just got his Wendy's burned down. I'm sure he'll get money from it, but overall it's like, how is that helping people? These people don't think. Someone said, Canada has a liberal government and we're struggling immensely. Yeah, Trudeau is a clown. It just kind of is disappointing that here we have Trump and he can't even do anything. We have a Republican Senate and they don't even do anything. But yeah, Trudeau is just pathetic. Sorry. Sorry, Canadians. Someone said, done more for minorities in four years than Obama did in eight. Trump did everything that you could possibly do for black America in a smart way. He passed, everybody wanted prison reform. All the rappers, including myself, were talking about prison reform for the last 10 years. Trump actually did it. He didn't talk about it, he did prison reform. He let Alice Johnson and 3,000 or so people out of prison that had extended sentences, probably from Joe Biden's crime bill. He let them out of prison. He passed Opportunity Zones. Opportunity Zones is a smart way to build up black neighborhoods. You don't just hand people cell phones or give them welfare. That traps them in the system. He put Opportunity Zones to make businesses have financial incentive to go to the inner cities where there isn't a lot of jobs. The more jobs you have, people are busy. There's less crime, more money. That's the whole systemic racism. Trump was helping fix it with Opportunity Zones and it was working. He did everything he could possibly do for black Americans, and they're still gonna vote for Joe Biden. Just goes to show you. I mean, he'll probably get a bigger percentage of the vote. He might get 30% or something, or 25 as opposed to like five, but he's not gonna get 50%, you know? And that's part of the big problem in that community is the they've been hijacked by the liberal, you know? If you read Booker T. Washington or W.E.B. Du Bois or Malcolm X or stuff, these were highly intelligent people who were warning people of what was going on and they just got sabotaged by the liberal and the media and the culture. Even Ice Cube's talking about it, but it's like his, his group, N.W.A., was kind of the shift from conscious rap and b-boying and breakdancing and good vibes to like gangster stuff. And then after that, the executives were only hiring that stuff. And he's posting memes about it, but it's like, you kind of did that as well, my man. You know, but it's like the prison industrial complex then worked with the music industry. They're telling black America to do this stuff and then they're arresting them for doing it. The whole thing was a trap. The whole music industry has been a trap for 25 years. They tell kids to take pills and do this stuff and then ki kids listen to the songs and do what they think is cool and then they end up killing themselves or in jail. These people are wicked. They don't just hurt you, they deceive you which is why Malcolm X said the liberal is the most dangerous man in the Western Hemisphere. He said there's whites who are trying to help blacks, but those whites never go under the guise of liberals. That white person who calls himself a liberal is the most dangerous person in the Western Hemisphere. Malcolm X warned people 40 years ago about this stuff. He wasn't saying it because he was trying to be rude or biased. He realized what they were doing. The conservative usually just tells you how they feel. They don't sugarcoat it. If they don't like you, they don't like you. If they like you, they like you. If they want you to act a certain way, they want you to act a certain way. The liberal can't tell the truth. All they do is lie. All they do is deceive. All they do is trick. All they do is pretend to help and hurt. That's why Malcolm X was a segregationist. I'm not pro-segregation, but his stance was like, leave me alone. I understand that from his perspective. Like He didn't want these white liberals like, oh, we're going to help you. We're going to come into your community and fix the schools. And we're going to, and, and Malcolm X was like, I got this. I'll do it. We'll do it. You go to your place. We'll fix our neighborhoods. And the, the white liberals like, no, we're going to do it. We're going to fix it all. And then they just screwed it all up. So I get why Malcolm X felt that way. They, they demonized him in schools and say he was like an extremist. He was super, super nice. 
And the more you listen to him towards the end of his career too, super nice guy, super thoughtful, super righteous, super not racist, super fair, called out blacks, called out whites, called out Jews, called out everyone, just didn't care. You know, he was like, you can call me racist or anti-Semitic, I don't care. You know, I'm not, I'm not affected by your words because I'm not mean. He got it. He was probably the best leader of that generation. And ah, they're like, now nah, we're going to fix your school. And then they just messed everything up. So there is systemic racism. There is systemic problems. And there's still systemic, systemic problems. And the same people who caused the systemic problems then to burden the black community are still doing it. Liberal culture, liberal media, liberal entertainment, liberal politicians. It's the same story on loop. They just keep duping people. And we are going to wake people up. That's what we're doing. We got people. And the more people who wake up, it's a movement. And once you're awakened, you don't go back. And there are a lot of people. Don't be deceived. I see on these accounts, people are getting ratioed. Justin Bieber posted a picture with Obama. Go look at his Instagram. He's getting ratioed. Everybody's calling him out. No one, feel, no one likes it. Everybody who keeps talking about this stuff, ratio, ratio, ratio. They, can't, they don't have enough PR teams to stop this stuff, guys. There are people waking up. Don't get discouraged. It's just, it's like when you pour water on a witch. When you pour water on a witch, what happens? They just scream. They go, ah, 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 ah. They just, you know, I'm melting. They, they make a scene before they melt. So hopefully that's happening because you hear them screaming now. They're just going nuts. Hopefully it's a result of them losing, you know, slowly losing the culture war. Someone said Malcolm X was off because of what he believed. Yeah, but I watched Young Pharaoh's video. He explained it. I don't think liberals were the ones who got Malcolm X. I think it was his own people. And this is a real, this is a real uh, testament to like a lot of things. Even like, you know, E2 Brutus, where it was like his own buddy stabbed him in the back. I think it was his own people because he started ratting on his own people because he realized they were like having multiple kids and stuff and doing weird stuff. He spoke about it and then I think his own people off them. I don't even think it was liberals. That's a statement though. That's why everyone always says like, don't do this, don't do It's like, guys, there's a lot of dangerous things in the world. Driving a car is dangerous. However, a lot of times it's your, it's your own circle that will turn on you the most, you know, that could do the most damage. Same with Trump, same with Malcolm X, same with anybody, so. It's just uh, something to think about. Someone said Democrats or Republicans are against Trump, the establishment. Yeah, even the Supreme Court judges. He, this guy can't catch a break. Even his own Supreme Court judges can't even vote right. And and the, the people that are the best are going to be the most hated. Because I'm not saying this guy's the best person in the world, but why did they hate Brett Kavanaugh so much? It's because he wasn't just another shill. He's going to vote with the Constitution, whether it ticks you off or someone else off. They don't care about these Bush-era Supreme Court judges because they're not really conservative. A Bush is the same thing as a Romney, is the same thing as an Obama. There's no difference between these people. They're just interchangeable puppets. Anybody that goes against what's wrong, anybody who goes against the wicked, is going to get maligned by the media because the wicked people control the media. The most wicked people have figured out a way to control academics, to control mass media, and destroy or try to destroy anybody that calls them out. They're not dumb. They're not simpletons. They've figured out the system. But so have we. Someone said they don't want a constitution. They don't even follow it. They're changing definitions of words. Like, it's just so embarrassing, but it's okay. All right, I got a few more minutes and I'm gonna take off. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you. And if you don't do anything, sign up to my free email list, stayintouchwithme.com. If you haven't gotten an email, don't be worried because I haven't sent one because emails are annoying, but I have them. And one day I'm gonna strike with an email. I just don't feel like it right now. But eventually I'll, I'll email somebody. So I say Romney is exactly what's wrong with the Republican Party. Yeah, he's terrible. But this is how this is how they go. You have to understand, if you're a billionaire or if you have a lot of power in this world and you want to control America, you're not just going to control one party. And this is how they've deceived people for for years. 
you're going to control both parties. So a lot of billionaires donate to both sides because whoever wins, they want to be able to do whatever they want to do. So if you give money to Dianne Feinstein, but you also give money to Arnold Schwarzenegger when he's a Republican, no matter who, even though I'm not saying they're the same position, but you can control both parties. So that's what a lot of these people do. They control both parties. Although Trump has a lot of connections, he has a lot of friends, he is tied into the establishment in some ways, he's clearly the most free person that we've ever had in the White House, and he's the most spontaneous person, and he's the most outspoken person against the media, against the Federal Reserve, against regime change war. It's undebatable at this point. Even in Trump's worst day, with his swamp creatures that he puts in, into, the, into big positions, there's a reason they hate him. It's because he's a loose cannon, in a good way. He's not controlled. He's not controllable. He can get controlled on some things, but he's not 100% tied down. Obama, Romney, there's no, almost no difference, guys. Like, th it's like Obama was like 1% doing his own thing, 99% doing what George Bush would have done. Trump is like 50-50. Like 50% 50 he's going along with status quo, but that 50%, he's also just rocking the boat. You know, it's good. It's, that's why they hate him. If he was terrible, they would love him. He's calling out the right people. Is he doing enough? He needs help. It's not going to just be him. He's got to, it needs to be a culture shift. He needs help. And even if he's not the right one, say he's not doing enough, he needs to be told to do it. He needs enough of his supporters to say, do that or else we're not voting, you know? So it's got to come from the people. There's only so much anyone can do. Joe Biden's not going to save you. Oh, we're going to vote for Joe Biden to get rid of Trump. What's that going to do? Put the guy in office who's been there for 40 years, who wrote the crime bills that you're complaining about? That it's... Okay. Someone said Kushner needs to go. Yeah, he's not my favorite. Thank you, Philip. I appreciate you, brother. Someone said he's unpredictable. Oh, for sure. Couple more minutes and I'm gonna take off. Sign up to my free email list. So I said too late, the dumbing down of America is in effect. It is in effect, it's gonna take a while, but you know, in general, I think what the, the reason that these people get away with it and you know, regardless of what you think about, you know, different ethnicities and such, most people in America are good people. So even with all this wickedness, the country hasn't fully fallen apart. We've had our cities get destroyed, but most people are good people. So you've seen even with the shutdown, even with all this chaos, even with this lawlessness, the country still has not completely gone to trash yet. There's still a lot of nice areas. That's a testament to our people, you know? We have good people here. We have more good people than not good people. We have more, you know, stable people than chaotic people. So, you know, we just have to build off that and just get the stable people to put their foot down, you know, and get stable people into higher positions to put their foot down. And then, you know, the other people can just shut up or talk, but not just destroy everything. Yeah, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Everything shifts, guys. Even you could think of the world's worst situations. They're gone now. You know, the, the slavery, gone. Still in, still, in, still in the Middle East and Africa, but they don't talk about it and parts of Asia. But, you know, uh, communism. Coming back, but gone, it'll, it'll, it'll pass, you know, regardless of how deep we get into this stuff, it'll eventually pass, it always does. So, you know, it's not, it's not a doomsday like we're all done. And if that is the case, then whatever. But I'm not worried about it. Thank you, Christy. Why aren't they being held accountable? The, they green light the police to do whatever they want. Um, I mean, I don't know that that's true in all areas, but here's the thing. When it comes to police being able to do whatever they want, a lot of it comes from unions and protection. So, for example, here's another deception of the left. And I'm not just blaming them. Republicans are, are, are bad, too, sometimes. But they just passed a new thing where they're conflating, you know, gender with sexuality. And then they're, they're giving more protections for people. So every time they move, whether it's affirmative action, whether it's this, whether it's other stuff... They're extending on, we already had civil rights, guys. We already had, you can't get fired for this or that. They add on to it. They make it impossible to fire anybody. It's not just police. 
you can't fire anybody in this country. They'll say it's racist. They'll say it's sexist. They'll say it's xenophobic. They'll say I'm a man or a woman. They, they, you can't fire anybody. So with police officers, it's the same thing. And a lot of the people pushing this are Democrats, whether it be unions or this type of stuff. It's not easy to fire a police officer. So why are they able to do whatever they want? Because there's no consequences for them because that's how the, the system is built. So now there's no consequences for Seattle. It's not just the police though, but in general, you know, they can't, they can't even do as much as you think they could do. If they do anything, people are gonna blame them nowadays. I mean, it's like, you, you know, someone wrestles with them and, and grabs for their, their stuff and then something, it's like, just don't wrestle with a police officer. I mean, go to, you know, you gotta wrestle with a police, like if, if you're gonna wrestle with a police officer, you might get killed. Everyone knows that. Who doesn't know that? It's just basic common sense. Like, is that the new controversy now? that happened in Atlanta, like, I'm not saying I wanted it to happen, but the dude, like, you can't wrestle with police. I, I don't know. Someone said, I know in Oregon they won't let the police do their jobs. Yeah, in a lot of liberal areas, they don't do anything. But in some areas, I came where I used to be, the police were always in, in everyone's business. They were annoying and obnoxious. Uh, they didn't have enough to do, you know? I don't think they had enough to, they had too much free time on their hands or something, so they were always just like harassing everybody. So I'm not, st it's like, you know, there's good and bad, but I don't I don't think the, the problem is that they can do whatever they want. I think they're not being allowed to do a lot, and if they are one of those type of bad police officers, you can't get rid of them. Derek Chauvin should have got fired seven times. Why was he still there? Ask the Democrat Attorney General and prosecutor who let him stay. Someone said, I'll see you. I have a small bladder. All right, too much information. No, I'm just kidding. It's fine. God bless you, Tay. Someone said, having a communist-controlled media is a lot of our problems. The media is the worst. That's why when Trump calls them out, that's very powerful. They're the worst. They... People don't understand how powerful they are. Like, we have a country of over 300 million people. Every day, millions of things are happening, guys. You're having interracial life-saving moments where like an Asian woman saves a white man. And you know, like these great moments happen all the time. And then also bad moments happen all the time. You can't statistically avoid it with 300 million people. So, you know, overall, they pick and choose what they talk about, what they make you think about. Everything they say is a lot, like everything they say is biased. You can do this, but you can't do this. This happened, this. They, they're, they're the most dishonest. They're wicked people, guys. They're extremely wicked. They're serving the opposite of God. And, uh, you know, regardless of what you believe, you could probably figure out these people are wicked people. The, the world and the country would be a much better place if the media was not lying and fear-mongering and just degenerates, for sure. So I said, are you worried that the UN might come and take over? I'm not worried about anything. Worrying and fear is not is not the solution, but the UN is, is a sneaky organization. I mean, I'm sure they're gonna try stuff, but whatever, you know, it is what it is. So I said, I genuinely feel that people are starting to see how hypocritical the media is right now. Everyone knows it, but everyone's just so scrambled. Like athletes hate the media because the, the media is horrible to athletes. Celebrities hate the media because the media is horrible to celebrities. No one likes the media. You know, none of these people like the media. They just assume, well, when they say it about Trump, it's like Nicki Minaj complains about the media. So, you know, if you if the media does that to you, do you think they could do it to Trump or to other people? Of course, they do it to everybody. They just nonstop lie and fear monger and try to sell regardless. So most people realize it now, but you know, it's just p people are so scrambled into what they believe and what they want. But that's also a testament to like, you know, I don't care, I get along with everybody. However, in Japan or China, you know, you have a, a, a homogenous population and they all tend to care about a lot of the same stuff like socially and culturally. Here, we're such a mi mixed ethnicity, you know, we're all over the place. It's like certain people have different goals and like what they want and what they so like people are just scrambled up right now and then you have like politics added into it and then they're scrambled into politics social events we're divided in like 50 different ways 
And the only real way to come together is massively taboo. Like, I want to come together. I want to bring everyone together. But people don't want to hear that. They Like, the flag is bad. It's racist. Well, then how are we going to come together? If we're not all American, what are we? You know, we're different ethnicities. We're different religions. And that's a beautiful thing. If we can come together under some sort of guise, this is our country. Let's make it better. You can get along with Muslims and Christians, guys. Regardless of what the media says, they're very different religions. However, Muslims and Christians have a lot of similarities when it comes to, you know, uh, not allowing degeneracy. They have a very hard line on like liberal stuff, to be quite honest. But now you mix it up with all this stuff, people are just like deranged. You know, we can have different religions and different ethnicities in America if we all come under the guise of this is our country, let's make it good. But they say making it good is bad, destroying it's good, don't stand for the flag, you know, only one race matters. The whole, the whole thing is a psyop, guys. I mean, of course black lives matter and all lives don't matter till black lives matter, but it, you can't say the word all lives matter now. It's like you're not allowed to say that everybody matters. You're only allowed to say that one race matters, but you're only allowed to talk about it in one way. That doesn't even include 99% of the people of that race. The whole thing's a psyop, guys. It's like you could say it till you're, you're red in the face, but it's all controlled. It's all manipulated to divide. It's not a uniting thing. It's it's a, you're here, you're here, you're here, you're here. And if you possibly try to bring everyone together, they say it's hate speech. It's a trap. It's a trap. Someone said, I'm terrified for this uh, election. Don't be terrified, though. You know, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no reward for being scared. Just be prepared. Um. Someone said the U.S. needs a 9-11 to come together. Not even that, though, because back then, everyone came together under that. Now, if that were to happen, people wouldn't come together. Guys, the, the, I'm sorry, but that half of politics is so deranged, they support it. They would support what happened on 9-11 just because they hate this country so much. It's not the same country it was in 2001. Back then, Democrats were not this deranged. They just weren't. You know, they were like, they still actually like the country. Like basic common sense was still there. It's not the same country. That that would not unite it. We need something even bigger. It needs to it needs to be a slow, you know, conversation. And every when you chip away at it and get more people, you could shift the herd. But I don't think that would even work now. And even that that was kind of a a sneaky way to just go over to the Middle East. So I don't, I don't even that was a terrible event. I'll say we big this is a good comment. And then I I'm gonna take off in like one minute. Brandon said we become Pavlov's dog, salivating for the next news headline for hate crimes. For sure. And it's 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 gonna happen. It happens what, nine times a year? So that that's one about once every month and a half, you know, at, at minimum. It's gonna happen. If you if you choose something that happens more. There's things that happen every day. Every day in this country, there's a tragedy. Every minute in this country, there's a tragedy. There's 350 million people in this country. So we're Pavlov's dogs. Just wait for them to tell you. I mean, they burned down the Wendy's. That wasn't even similar to the George Floyd situation at all. It was a totally different situation, but people don't care anymore. They're not looking for truth. They're not looking for what's right. It's all good. We'll get, we'll get it cracking. Someone said, can you, talk about, can you talk about the patents on man-manipulated viruses? You gotta watch, I have a video. It's, uh, I think they put like a fact checker on it, even though the fact checker's wrong and my video's accurate. But um, you can watch that video if you go down, scroll down the video thing, look for that one. I have a whole video on it with pop-ups and stuff. You can't find a better one. It's got like 10 million views. Someone said, we're going to be fine because of people like you. Well, that's a big burden on, on my back, Jonathan. I'll see what I can do. All right. God bless you guys. God bless your family. God bless America. God bless the world. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it as always. And uh, I'm going to leave this up probably for the whole day. And then um, if you want to watch older live streams for, for, for whatever reason, most of them, not all of them, but most of them are on my YouTube and BitChute page. I just take them off here. 
multiple reasons, but uh, you know, I like to get people to watch my other videos that are more concise, but I like this one. It'll stay up for a day here, and if you wanna watch it, go to my YouTube channel or my bit shoot. And the way to find that is on YouTube. It's Anomaly, spelled always, A-N-0-M-A-L-Y, Anomaly, A-N-0-M-A-L-Y. My Instagram is Dream Rare. If you have Instagram, it's D-R-E-A-M-R-A-R-E, -R -E, Dream Rare. I do a lot of stuff on Instagram now too. I'm starting to like the story mode on that. Uh, and then you can watch it on bitshoot.com slash dream rare if you want to see any of this stuff. And my email list is stayintouchwithme.com. Many more stuff coming on here. I appreciate it. And if you want to watch the live streams, YouTube and Bitshoot. If you want to see other stuff, Instagram, dream rare. Twitter at legendary energy, spelled like that. Uh, and if you ever want to find me on any of the social media, you can just use anomaly and put it in the search bar, and just to let you know, it's A-N-0-M-A-L-Y. So the O is a zero, A-N-0-M-A-L-Y. You remember that, that's all you need to know. Have a good day, guys. God bless you, I'll be back soon.